Thank you for taking the time to listen to our show today. I'm Jason McGregor. I'm the host of the Minnick McGregor Wealthcast. Each episode, we will be discussing topics we believe to be important to our clients. And welcome to our podcast this week. Hi, everybody. This is Jason McGregor, and welcome to our Wealthcast. Uh, today, I'm joined by Corey Laird. Corey. Good. good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Good to see you, Corey. Um, if you don't know, uh, I'm the owner of Minnick McGregor Wealth Management, and Corey is a certified financial planner. And together, we help people uh, with their financial planning and investment management needs. And today, uh, the Wealthcast is going to be all about inflation. Uh, maybe not all about inflation, but we'll talk a little bit about inflation today. It is something that we hear about and talk about in the media on a daily basis, pretty much can't get away from it. And really the, the highlights that we're going to talk about or the outline for today is we're going to briefly describe, you know, how we just, you know, how we define inflation. We're going to talk about how we measure inflation and then the pros and cons or the negatives and positives. And the reason why um, it's in the headlines every day is it can have a material impact on you know, our, our finances and the, and the capital markets throughout the world. So, uh, Corey, if I, if I threw you a softball and said to you, yeah, what is inflation? How would you answer that? I would probably answer it is inflation is more of a, an effect that's caused by a few things. You know, a few things being, you know, you got wage increases, you've got the cost of, of, of business expenses, increasing business expenses, and you have the supply of money. So you got all these things that are kind of happening that are affecting the economy. And as it affects the economy, if you have more cash in your pocket or your, if your business expenses are increasing, <coughs> you're either passing that to the consumer or you know, eating up your profit. So, okay, so, so you explained it by saying what causes it, but you know, what is it? I mean, isn't it just the price of goods and services rising? It is. It is an effect that's caused by a few things, and that that effect of what we call what we call inflation, what we label as inflation. But we have things that are currently growing the economy, and with the growth of economy, it's increasing business, increasing cost of goods. So yeah. the increase of the cost of goods um, is what inflation is. All right. So then, uh, you know. The, the most common way we measure it is through CPI, sure. you know, consumer price index. Now there are a number of other ways that you can measure uh, mm -hmm. inflation. You know, the CPI has some known limitations, but essentially the CPI is a basket of goods and services that um, the government can measure daily, weekly, monthly, and trend it. You know, basically look at the look at that basket of goods and say, you know, Overall, is the price, is that basket growing as far as the expense? And we feel it when we go out and buy things, right? I mean, uh, price of gas, food, housing, um, just anything that we buy. I think as we talk to our clients and we do our own personal shopping, there is inflation currently, no doubt about it. But how it gets measured is somewhat debatable because, you know, they, the way CPI is measured, it doesn't include everything. It doesn't. Yeah, and it's actually pretty secretive. Uh, when the government is measuring these types of things, they're sending people out and um, trying to measure the cost of these goods. And they actually keep it pretty secretive to make sure nobody can game it. Game it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So CPI is the number one. There are others. There's the producer, producer price index or PPI um, and a assortment of others. But we'll really just talk about CPI. And for our clients and those of you who are listening or watching, you know, you think of the things that we go out and buy, right? So it is inflation's positioned as usually as a negative. Okay. So, you know, That's if right. we're going to talk about the pros and cons of inflation, let's start with what people are listening for most likely, which are the negatives. So the media makes this out as if inflation rises too much, it's going to be awful. What, why? Why is it bad? Well, I'm afraid that if the media, you know, if the inflation increases at all in any amount, it, in, in anybody's definition, it's bad. But in fact, you know, inflation is a necessary thing. You need inflation. But some of the negatives of inflation, yeah. I would say if you're on a fixed income, you know, if you're on a fixed income and your pension's not increasing, your Social Security is being eaten up by Medicare premiums, then inflation is going to erode your lifestyle. Sure. So you definitely need to have some type of 
you know, some type of, you know, stock market or COLA, cost of living adjustments, type of increase in your life and your income to combat inflation. So I would say that's certainly a negative. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we're all old enough to remember, you think back 15, 20, 30 years ago, or you hear your parents and grandparents talk about how uh, down the gas used to cost, uh, you know, $1.50 or sure. whatever it was, or you, know, you could buy a house, your grandparents probably bought a house for $25,000 at the most, and it was a lot of money. And now, you know, you 10, 15, 20 times that is the going rate for the average home. And, you know, in, in a traditional sense, that's inflation. I mean, it's just the price of goods and services that rise over time. And if you can't keep up with that inflation, then you lose purchasing power. That's right? correct. So when we talk to our clients about their money in the banks right now, people say, well, I'm keeping my money in the bank because it's safe. Secure. Yep, it's safe and secure, which is great. Uh, what they're referring to is principal risk, mm -hmm. okay? But there's also an inflation risk. That's right. Uh, especially if you're on a fixed income. So what is the current inflation rate? So in terms of the last month, when they report it on a monthly basis, they're annualizing it, which means they take their monthly amount and they multiply by basically 12. So the annualized last month, I believe was 5.4%. Okay, so that's higher than normal. Certainly. You know, historically, we use a 3% average inflation rate. Okay. I believe the feds have a target in the mid twos is try to you know, keep a monetary policy, keep it there. So what can the government do to um, keep inflation in check? Well, the main thing is going to be the interest rates. You know, that's the primary weapon that the Federal Reserve has against the rising inflation, mm -hmm. uh, which has its own problems. We're not going to talk about today, but in terms of combating inflation is to increase interest rates. So you think about all the cheap money that's out there, all the cheap mortgages and all the cheap car loans. If the interest rates are starting to increase, then maybe you do a second thought of whether you want that extra car or a second thought of if you want to move and have that extra house or second house or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it yeah, and the businesses are doing the same thing. The businesses are leveraged, they have loans and they have debt, and they're going to think twice about getting another loan to get that new factory or getting a loan to hire new people. Mm -hmm. Because if in the cost of borrowing costs are higher, they're not going to do that. And so all the spending is dropping a little bit, which means inflation is going down. Okay. So one of the other negatives from a business perspective is inflation pressure on wages. Yep. Right. So if wages are being forced higher, then a business has to stay competitive and pay their employees more. Ideally. Don't get your hopes up, Corey. <laughs> and yeah. um, inflation's 15% last year, I think right, it was, right? right. Yeah, okay. So we'll take that into consideration. <laughs> and then um, oftentimes businesses try to pass those costs on to the consumer, correct? But they can't always, which then does what? decreases corporate profit mm -hmm. decreasing pro corporate profit stock, uh, market. stock market goes down yep. stock market is driven by corporate profits so if the fear is that as inflation on the wage side increases and businesses have to absorb that by reducing their profit then the stock market could go down sure so that's a negative out there um any positives yes i think that the positives of inflation is is if you just get rid of inflation, we have a stagnating economy. Mm -hmm. You need inflation to keep the engine running, you know, to keep the engine, the, the GDP engine running. You know, you need to have, you know, increasing expenses uh, on your eggs and on your gas, because with increasing, in, increasing expenses comes someone's salary increasing, which means that they can then spend more when, which means that, you know, they pass the dollar around and everybody's increasing therefore the economy is increasing. Mm -hmm. So in terms of inflation, the good thing about it is, is that it doesn't drive the economy, but it certainly is the oil in the engine. Okay, good analogy. So we need inflation. So in by itself, by definition, uh, you know, we don't get scared by it. It's a good thing. It's a necessary thing. We don't want stagnation or deflation, which is meaning the price of goods and services are going down. Sure. Okay, that's not good for the capital markets mm -hmm. most times. So we want to have some inflation growth mm -hmm. too much of anything is usually a bad thing so we have to watch that um we're not going to get into today's podcast of whether or not the government will pull the appropriate lever levers to keep inflation in check uh, but know that 
you know, there are things that investors can do, uh, people who are retired or about to retire can do to protect themselves uh, with inflation. Yeah. And that's on the investment side of things. It's on the financial planning side of things. Um, so we talk about the financial planning side of things. If you're in your late 50s or early 60s and you're doing your own projections as far as how much money you need to live on or what your expenses are going to be over the next 20 or 30 years, then you have to, of course, inflate those numbers. Of course. You know, straight line projections are wildly inaccurate. Um, I love talking to, you know, clients in their 80s and 90s who maybe used to work for the telephone company and uh, they retire on their $450 a month pension. And you think, how the heck did they retire on a $450 pension? Well, 35 years ago, that was a lot more money than it was today. It was like $1,500 in today's dollar. So, sure. Uh, you know, you have a $1,500 a month pension plus Social Security, you're like, yeah, that, that works. Now, of course, it doesn't. So if you are doing your own financial planning or using any software, make sure you have some sort of factor. And we recommend at a minimum 3%. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the investment side of things, um, if you're not growing your money by at least 3%, then you're losing purchasing power. That yeah, is a, that's a real risk. Yeah, you would certainly want to off. You know, you want to balance out the money you have in the bank for emergencies, big, big, you know, soon to be big purchases, sure. and you know, overall, just having some money to, to have some secure. Yeah. But you have too much in the bank. You know, these days with the interest rates, these days being the last really the last ten years, with the interest rates really not even getting close to inflation, it starts to be like an anchor. You know, it starts to be, you know, holding you back, so to speak, and you're kind of falling behind with inflation. Yeah. And we're, we're delving into an interest rate topic here. But, you know, for the last 12 years, there was a reason why the Federal Reserve was keeping interest rates low sure. because they wanted that money out of the banks and into the economy. Yeah. Right. With inflation as low as it was as well, it didn't really hurt that many people. You know, inflation was one and a half percent. Interest rates were 0.1. It didn't hurt too much. Now that interest rates are 0.1 percent still, but inflation is five, five and a half percent, starting to hurt a little bit more. That's right. So um, there are ways to do a portfolio review. Make sure that, uh, especially on the fixed income side, the bond side of thing, there are bonds that uh, get hurt more or lose more value in a rising interest rate and or inflationary period of time. Mm-hmm. So it's a good time to do a checkup on that. But you know, just to summarize, inflation, it's the general rise of the price of goods and services. It is a supply and demand issue. You know, when you have more money, i.e. a lot of money coming into the economy and you have fewer products, you know, we have a product shortage right now that is a a driver of more money chasing fewer goods. That's supply and demand one-on-one. Those prices are going to go higher until, you know, either the money supply decreases or the product, the amount of product increases, right? right? I mean, and that will be... To be seen of when that happens and not going to get you know solved here yeah. today. Get out my crystal ball here. So. <laughs> crystal ball or eight ball or Ouija <laughs> board. Yeah. So um, any other comments about inflation before we uh, wrap things up? No, it's necessary. It's necessary. I don't want to go too far. It's saying evil, necessary evil, but it is necessary. You know, it, it's our hope that two things either happen to make sure it doesn't get too high. Either the government, the Federal Reserve, you know, increase interest rates. Uh, at the right time to make sure it doesn't happen, or the market kind of takes care of itself, and you know, it, you know, supply issues, you know, get solved, and demand maybe decreases, and it kind of solves itself out. But we're hoping those two things happen in terms of inflation. Sounds good. So as always, uh, we can be reached at 518-499-4565 if you have any questions. Our website is mmwealth.com, and if you have any questions or any feedback, love to hear from you. And uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to uh, listen and or watch us. Have a great day. Mindy McGregor Wealth Management is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability. Information presented does not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell or a solicitation of any offer to buy or sell the securities discussed. Different types of investments involve varying degrees of risk, and there can be no assurance that any investment or strategy will be suitable or profitable for an investor's portfolio. There are no assurances that an investor's portfolio will match or outperform any particular benchmark. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. The tax and legal information contained in this podcast is general in nature. Always consult an attorney or tax professional regarding your specific legal or tax situation.